Pennsylvania Dutch, Night Before Christmas. In Pennsylvania Dutch country, the bell schnickel of German origin often replaces Santa Claus. The bell schnickel is a crotchety old man. In one hand, he carries a bag of treats, and in the other, he has switches, apparently, to spank bad children. It was night before Christmas, and all over the farm, nothing was shushlick, no cause for alarm. The sacks were all hung by the chimney, just so, with the hopes they get filled up from ankle to toe. The Nicknutsies schnoosen without any sound in their heads. Clear toy candy's been dancing around. And Mama and me, Belle, be out in delight, crawled under the covers and snuggled up tight. Then from the outside, we heard something fierce that made open our eyeballs and rattled our ears. There was crashing and banging and could it be true? Did our ears deceive us or was that a moo? Then off to the window we ran in the dark, kicked the dog accidental. He started to bark. Then we looked through the window coming in through the gate. It wasn't one more we saw, it was eight. Four cows and four steers, they were harnessed somehow and were dragging behind them an old fashioned plow. And there, just behind it, as sour as a pickle, was the fellow we knew had to be the best schnickel. He wiggled that plow to keep going on course. I think he'd done better if he'd had a horse. So duplic and slow those eight dummers did run and he growled and he grumbled and he yelled at each one. Now Jackie, now Becky, now Rachel, Josiah, and Minnow, Sarah, Esther, Obadiah, and watch where you're going, there's nothing on visor than stamping your hoofs into stray fertilizer. They got through the barnyard without any hitch, and the bell schnickel grumbled and raised a big switch. Climb up on that roof now, and you make it snappy. You don't want to make me no more unhappy. Mucked off on that trellis then to the porch roof, and don't get no ivy vines caught in your hoof. I'll get awful grishlick if you make me fall. So clamor up, clamor up, clamor up all. Like the chickens all look then to fly their trying or the mess kids are making then shoes they are tying. So clumby, clumsy they climbed up an inch with each moo, but somehow they made it and it wanders me too. And then in a twinkle we heard on the roof each cow that was rushling round stomping its hoof. The cracks in the roof timbers filled our ears cause it just wasn't built for four cows and four steers. By now, all the kitties had run in our room frightened by all of those cracks and those booms. To tell them what happened, I was just going to begin. Then, chop and chasui, the ceiling fell in. Down came the bell schnickel, plop in our bed, a few shingles making down right on his head. And then we looked up through the hole in the ceiling. It was just a little bit worried we're feeling. For there overhead was that eight head of cattle still stomping so hard that it made the walls rattle. We felt as if we'd been cursed and were hexed and that cows would fall down in our bedroom next. But they on the roof stayed and I wiped away sweat and then looked at that scary old bell schnickel yet. He had got on his feet and was brushing his breeches, holding his sack and using his switches. He was dressed all in black from his toes to his hat and he frowned and said, hey, what are you looking at? Ain't you never seen no bell schnickel before? Well, I had, but the others had come in through the door. His beard was all shriplick as white as the snowfall, and his belly so skinny it nearly was all. I couldn't help thinking that this crabby old guy could use a few dumplings and shoe fly pie. His eyes, they looked angry, but though they seemed mild, when he looked at the kitties, he just sort of smiled, 
Then he wiped it away like he'd made a mistake. Ah, for him, snitz and knap, mama should make. Then he asked all the kitties, have you been bad or sweet? If it's good that you've been, then I'll give you a treat. But if you've been bad, then I'll warm your britches with one of my special bad kitty switches. Then they said they'd been good and were telling the truth. Still, he glowered at Amos and grimaced at Ruth. He frowned down at Abnu, who just sort of grinned, and the bell schnickle leaned down and tickled his chin. Ugh, crabby I might seem, but don't you forget, I ain't never had to spank Von Kitty yet. It just must be something round in the air. Makes the kitties act better this time of year. So his switches he dropped and he opened his sack and he handed out oranges, yo-yos, and jacks, a dolly for Root and a good horse for Amos. We laughed as we watched him, and who could blame us? And finally he gave to Abner a teddy, that that final gift to leave he bus ready. But he said as he crawled over shingles and snip sticks, I'll send over Stoltzfus your broke roof to fix. Then he chumped the hole through up to his baiting plow, and he yelled to his livestock, Get going, and now down to the ground and vet out no complaint until we get done and all the houses ain't. They sprung off the roof to the yard they below, where they got stuck in nearly 40 inches of snow, and their best nickel yell brushing snow off his head. Merry Christmas, Zual! Now just go back to bed.